hello there everyone, my name is Amy, this is the Opinionated Woman, and welcome back to Crafty Reads, the series where I craft something, and we talk about the last five books that I've read. Um, it feels like it's been forever since I last filmed one of these, and it is because I started reading two very slow-paced long books on audio and physically at the same time, and it slowed my reading down dramatically compared to how I was reading before then. So we finally got me here. I slogged through those books. I'm back on track. Um, and yeah, I am going to be working on, I started a new sweater. I just bought yarn for a new sweater. And then I was like, no, I want to make the scrap yarn sweater because I'm obsessed with like reducing my, my yarn stash. And <laughs> it's a top down, I think it's a raglan um, from Made in the Moment. I'll put the link down below. Um, but you do it from the top down, which I really like because I'm worried about um, getting the collar right and everything like that. So yeah, doing it like this top down is very good. So I'm starting to use up some smaller bits of yarn. Okay, cool. Let's get into the books. Okay, so the first book that I started reading that was really slowing me down was The Interesting. So I made Wallet. I picked this one up from the library. Um, and not to say that it's a bad book. I think it's actually a very good um like slice of life look into class and um envy and and friendship dynamics and things like that but i feel like it was way too long like it was almost 500 pages and it was very slow paced and i love a slow paced book i really do i love a character focused book or what my mom would call a peopley book this is definitely a peopley book but i think because but I think because of the pace, I think it just could have been a little bit shorter and I think it would have been would have been great. Um, so this book is basically following this group of six friends who met in the 60s in a um, at a, a, a summer camp, basically, a, like a kind of rich kid summer camp. Um, and it follows their lives from then when they're around 16, 17 to um, in their 40s. Um, so we get uh, like some people in the group getting married there's one big event that sort of like goes through the 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 story and I I checked it's not in the blurb so I don't want to mention it here but one of the guys does something really bad to one of the girls and that's like an underlying storyline to the whole book that like creates this tension which is very interesting um but what I so it's like very much like these friends are from different type of upbringings um some of them are very rich some of them are like scraping to get by one of them is gay and uh i feel like i would have loved to get his story more because he was gay in the 80s um with an hiv positive partner which i thought was very interesting and he was in a cult in the 70s so i would have loved to see more of him his name is jonah um his side of the story i think that would have been very interesting but we mainly get um the story from our main character, Jules. Um, she is not a rich kid. Um, I think she got a scholarship to go to that um, uh, summer camp, but she is a very dissatisfied character. She's a character that really, um, she envies a lot of the things that her friends have that she doesn't have and their way of life. And she's, thought that she's found her calling multiple times and tried it and failed um, or not failed but it turns out that that's not you know what she was meant for and I really relate to that I started studying zoology realized that wasn't for me I studied architecture I was an architect for a while it wasn't for me studied patisserie was a pastry chef for a while it was not for me now I'm a freelance writer and I feel quite happy but I feel like Jules really struggles to at any point in her life like really sit in the moment and feel happy about what she actually has instead of looking at what she could have um and i thought that was very delicately done and i definitely want to read the female persuasion from meg Wallace. i think that's the one that put her on my radar as a as a writer um so i'm definitely going to give that one a go hopefully that one is not too long <laughs> Then we have one that really didn't agree with me, which was such a bummer, and that's Zero Days by Ruth Ware. This is Ruth Ware's latest um, thriller. I love Ruth Ware. I've read most of her books, or like a lot of her books at least, um, and they generally tend to work for me, but this one just 
it just didn't. Um, yet again, it fell victim to being too damn long. And like, I really loved Ruth Ware's book before this one. Um, was it before this one or the one before? Whichever one the It Girl was. I really enjoyed the It Girl. I thought that the, the twists and stuff were great. It was just too damn long. Like it didn't need to be that long. It's a thriller. I don't think thrillers need to be 500 to 600 pages long. And I love the long book, but not for a thriller. It just does, it's not right for the, the, the pace that you want to be going. Um, and yeah, I think this one really fell down because of that. Um, we're following our main character, Jack. And at the beginning of the story, she is doing a penetration test. So that's when a company pays you to try and hack into and physically break into their buildings to try to test the security system. So she's the one who physically breaks into the buildings and Gabe, her husband, is the one who uh, like keeps an eye on her and does the digital side of things. Um, and she's on a job and I was like, oh my God, I really don't want this to be like a constant thing that they're doing the whole time. It's kind of heisty, it's sort of Mission Impossible-esque, that's not my vibe. Um, so, but luckily it wasn't that. It, it was something else that I'm also not a huge fan of, but like I prefer it to the whole like heisty vibe, I guess. Um, but Jack does this mission, she gets arrested um, on the job, but she has like paperwork and stuff like that from her uh, client just to be like, no, she is meant to be breaking in here, I promise. Um, which I think is quite funny. <laughs> but she, so she ends up being a little bit late home. She gets home and in the few hours since she's spoken to her, sp spoken to him, her husband Gabe has been like brutally murdered. And she starts getting questioned by the police at the police station and she comes to the realization that someone's setting her up for the fall for this for this murder. And this is where it, I started to struggle because she decides to make a run for it. And I'm like, that is the dumbest thing you can do. You're literally, you're, you're literally innocent. Why are you running? That's so dumb. So that was already annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and she carried on making silly mistakes as she went on. So this is like a on the run from the cops type of book, which wouldn't normally be my sort of vibe either. But I was just like, you know, this is give it a go and, and hopefully the ending's uh, worth it. And it really wasn't. Like she injures herself very early on in running away. And that is like a thing that's sort of like a ticking clock because she's like really sick and not doing well. Um, but she goes on a escapade trying to find out basically um, who killed Gabe and who is to blame and things like that. But the thing with Ruth Ware is she usually keeps the tension going really well through the book and gives you some really well-timed twists. And this, I feel like we found out who was responsible very early and nothing changed. It didn't change for like hours of listening to the audiobook. Um, and then the ending was really unsatisfying. Like it didn't like finish off things that I think need to be finished off in a book like this. So yeah, I just found it very disappointing. And but I will pick up more from Ruth Ware because she is my throat a bitch. Then I read one that worked very well for me, another library book, and that is Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I know, I know, this book has been out for a really long time, and people have been talking about it for fucking ever but i haven't been able to get hold of it and i saw it in the library and i was like you you're coming home with me and it was worth all the hype so basically it's set at this manor house who's black heath is it black heath or is that just a mcdonald's that i worked on i don't know <laughs> so they're at this manor house basically and this guy wakes up and he has no memories of where he is who he is, why he's there, and then he gets told by this creepy plague doctor guy that basically he's stuck in this loop, like a, a Groundhog Day sort of situation. So every day, he's he's at this, uh, like there's a lot of people at this manor house, they've come together for a big ball basically for this, um, for Evelyn Hardcastle who's come home from France. So there's a lot of different people with their own agendas sort of in the house. And each day our protagonist, who we don't know the name of, we don't know his identity at that point, um, will wake up 
in a different person's body on each day and he'll retain his memories for eight days for eight hosts and then he needs to be able at the end of that to go to this plague doctor give him the information and say this is who kills or plans to kill Evelyn Hardcastle because that's the thing he needs to solve who kills Evelyn, Hulk, Evelyn Hardcastle. That's why it's the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle because she has to die over and over and over for him to figure out who did this and why. And I'm not going to tell you any more about that. It's absolutely fucking thrilling. It had me turning those pages so fast. The twists were awesome. The way that the puzzle like sort of pushes things together and how the different um, iterations of the main character um, sort of interact with each other in a, um, in a, like, weird, like, separate kind of way. I just thought it was so well done. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and the ending was absolutely wonderful. It was, like, completely, a, like, twist out of nowhere. And I, or not out of nowhere, it was just twisty the whole way through. And I absolutely loved it. So if you, like me have been um, holding off, now I'm starting to increase um, on this one, read it, it's well worth it. Then I read Velvet Was the Knife by Silver Marina Garcia. How gorgeous is this fucking book cover? Oh my God. So I picked this one up because I wanted to uh, read this writer. I do uh, definitely want to pick up um, Mexican, oh, whoopsie daisy. Uh, Mexican Gothic um, because I do like this author's writing but I think this book also suffered from it wasn't too long because it was only like a 300 or so page book but I think it was intriguing in the beginning slow through the middle with a really great end so the end like really uh, made me enthusiastic more about the book because like the center of it was kind of kind of slow um, so this book is basically following two main characters, Elvis and Maite. Um, Elvis works for like a gang. Um, they're sort of uh, run by the government um, or they're, they're hired by the government. They like sort of the muscle that come in and then beat up students during protests and stuff like that because there's a lot of like uprising that's happening at the moment um, in Mexico. When this is happening so um so that's what elvis is doing and then maite who's our other main character um she's a receptionist she sort of just plods through life she's sort of uninterested in life um she, the only thing that really gets her going is her romance comics that she reads um this is set during the was it the 50s it's a noir novel in the 70s it's like red scare you know that whole vibe um, and she's just working as a secretary and one day she gets a knock on her door and it's a neighbor of hers, this like young girl, um, a student, art student, and she says, will you look after my cat for me? Um, I'm going away for a few days and she's like, oh, sure, no problem. She's like a little bit grumpy about it, but she charges her a lot of money and she's like, okay, cool, I'll look after the vicious cat. Um, <laughs> and, but then she doesn't come back. And Maite starts to try and figure out where the hell she's gone because she gets a message from her at one point to tell her to meet her somewhere with the cat and she never meets up with her. So there's this whole mystery about where this girl has gone. And Maite has her own reasons. Like she's sort of like looking for excitement in her life and this is something exciting. Um, and so she starts to try to figure out what's happened to this girl. And Elvis's boss wants to also track down this girl because she's got photographs of a um, protest that might be incriminating. So everyone's looking for this girl and it culminates in a shit show. Oh my god, the ending is just like bah, 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 bah. and it was really interesting and I really liked it. Oh, and it was set in Mexico, which I also really liked. Like that whole look, that seeing that setting and also how the red scare affected that area of the world as well was very interesting. Um, so yeah, I liked how it was a night. It wasn't my favorite, but definitely want to try Mexican Gothic. But one that is on my favorites is The Muse by Jessie Burton. This is firmly going on to my favorite books of the year. 
um, for the end of the year. You, if you know, I do it in like the first half of the year and second half of the year because my memory can't survive with trying to figure out best books of the whole year. So I do it in two halves. Um, so The Muse by Jessie Burton is a classic example of her historical fiction and the way that she... Um, the way that she takes dual timelines and dual perspectives and just like weaves them into each other like really perfectly. So in our main storyline, or in, in the, the more recent storyline, we're following Odell Bastian. She's a woman in the 60s. From, she's from the Caribbean. Um, and she's living in London and she just starts working at this art gallery uh, for this woman called Marjorie Quick, who's just like very interesting, very eclectic woman. Um, and a man brings in a painting that his mother, who just recently passed away, um, has had on her wall for forever and he wants to get it valued. And Quick seems very thrown off by seeing this painting. And she doesn't really want them to find out about who painted it or anything like that because they think it's by this artist called Isaac Robles, uh, who's from Spain. And that side of the story is basically Odell figuring out the history of this painting and also trying to figure out Marjorie Quick and her motivations and who she is as a person. It's very, very interesting. Um, and then the second point of view is set in Spain at this like big manor house um, that Olive Schloss and her family are staying at. So she's like around 19 years old um, and she's there with her mother and father. Um, and she paints, she's an artist, and um, she doesn't think that like her father, the art dealer, would really care about her work much because it was by her. Um, so she gets into art school and just like doesn't tell her parents because she doesn't think that they're going to think that's acceptable because, oh, sorry, this, this uh, time frame is set in the 30s. Um, so while they're at this manor house, this brother and sister duo called Isaac and Teresa Robles um, come to the house to, you know, help them with housekeeping and things like that. And they start to become enmeshed in the family in like a really inappropriate way. And things get all twisty and messy. And then the war starts to approach and things get really messy. And identities get twisted and I'm just going to leave it at that because it's just it's so well done I don't want to spoil anything for you I just thought the the way that the oh fuck I just realized I done something wrong no I haven't I haven't mm -hmm. um I just thought it was so well paced and it also helped you, it gave you enough information that you could sort of figure out what was happening by yourself. Um, but only get like, like it was almost time so that you would figure out the reveal as the reveal was happening and it feels very satisfying as a reader. So yeah, I just really enjoyed that. This is definitely my favorite Jessie Burton. Okay, and that is the end of this Crafty Reads. I've done this much, I've started with the increasing in the raglan. So that's my little pink. <laughs> I've got this much left. And then I'm gonna do some green. I think it's gonna be so beautiful. It's gonna be so colorful and wonderful. Okay, anyway, I hope you did enjoy that. Um, I, it's nice to be back filming this. Hopefully I'll be back with one much sooner because I am reading a bit more PC at the moment. Um, if you want to check down in my description box below, you'll see my social media. We have a good fun old time on TikTok and there are gorgeous book pictures on Instagram. Um, and my coffee link is also down there, my little one-time tip jar if you feel like you want to support my channel monetarily. Um, but yes, other than that, like, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff and I'll check you next time.